My name is Jim Chu. I am the CEO of Delo AT. We are a company that provides poor families in Haiti with clean water. And we're doing it with uh, people who invest in Haiti as a business. You see a lot of children on the streets in Haiti uh, cleaning windows, selling things, carrying things. Uh, I call it child labor. And when you ask why are they working, it's not because their parents are mean people or they're forcing their children to be slaves working on the street. It's because they're poor. And at the end of the day, child labor is linked to economic development. If you're poor and the only way for you to survive is for everyone to work, then that's what you'll do. How do you define child labor? That's a great question. Uh, you know, doing your chores at home is not child labor, sorry to tell you. Child labor is really uh, when a child works and it deprives them of their childhood, of their chance to go to school, chance to learn, chance to play and learn, chance to grow up safely without having their bodies or minds damaged. What child labor is in many countries is a necessity to survive. And because of that, survival is off the backs of children. And that's where the future of that country or the future of that society is at risk because children are the future. A lot of people go to Haiti um, to help, and that's a great thing. But oftentimes, just giving things away isn't the right answer long term. What Haiti really needs is long-term investment and the ability for people to find jobs, for families to create wealth, and therefore make their families and the whole country richer. In the 1800s, Haiti used to be one of the richest exporting countries in the world. So much of the world's coffee and sugar came from Haiti. But in the last hundred years or so, the political situation has become so unstable that it's been difficult for businesses to be successful in Haiti. And so Haiti has really been left out of the globalization picture and left behind in terms of creation of wealth and people becoming richer. And so Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere today because of that, and despite all the riches the country has. What it is is that companies are looking for the best environment to make their product, whether it's a t-shirt or a toy or anything. And if the laws, good laws, aren't in place to make sure that vulnerable people, children, very poor people, aren't protected in some basic ways, then it's very easy for people in between to take advantage of that situation. So uh, laws and regulations that make sure that companies are uh, living up to a certain standard is very, very important for globalization. Uh, at the same time, the other side of the story where uh, people are rejecting globalization because of some of the bad effects, I think that's also wrong because globalization has brought so much wealth creation and so much economic development that ultimately benefits children because at the end of the day, the richer a country is, the more likely there's going to be less child labor and happier families and happier children. I think one of the most important things to understand about globalization is that there are both winners and losers. Globalization is about creating playing field, like if you go and play soccer or go and play football, a playing field that includes more and more people, which means that you get better at soccer, but there are also people who get left out because they just aren't that good. And so I think what's very important in globalization that people understand that, and it's the role of governments and good policy, the policies that the governments make, to make sure that the benefits of globalization are spread out to as many people within society as possible. My advice to the policymakers of tomorrow is Making good policy is difficult. There are many reasons why a politician or a policymaker should do this or that that benefit themselves or benefit just the short term. It's the, it's the people who can think long term and create policies that don't necessarily benefit them or don't even benefit the societies in the short term, but benefit everybody in the long term. Those are the people that we're going to remember. Those are the policies that our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren will benefit from. So I would say, think long term as a policymaker. Think about how one day you will change society, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, but 50 years down the line or 60 years down the line. I hope you enjoy this class. 
Keep in mind, you could be working in a factory, you could be working in the fields, but you're actually here learning and having the opportunity to change your future and change the future of your children as well. Thank you.